Hello everyone, this is AI6YR um, with another amateur radio project. Just a, a fun one that a lot of folks uh, may like to do if you're into figuring out what's going on with airplanes in your area. Um, it's uh, creating your own aircraft receiver. receiver. Uh, this uh, can also be very useful if you ever wanted to figure out uh, what's going on in a local airport. Um, a lot of fascinating things you can do with uh, ADSB. So uh, ADSB is called uh, is Automatic Dependent um, Surveillance Broadcast, which is a protocol which uh, uh, is used to monitor what's going on with airplanes. Uh, actually, most airplanes nowadays are required to have these uh, receivers or, or transmitters within the airplane. Uh, which um, send out information about their heading, what their flight is, what their tail number is, um, all, all sorts of information that uh, can be useful. And it's actually used uh, by the FAA for air traffic control. And uh, fortunately for uh, those of us who are just into radio and electronics and projects, you, you can actually receive those yourself and you can decode them. So uh, a little bit of trivia is anyone who's played with... Uh, Figuring out what an airplane is on a um, on an iPhone or Android or something like that, or through one of the flight services, they're actually extracted from ADSB uh, receivers, and many of them run by amateur radio operators. So um, what I've got here is I'm running a, a software that's commonly used uh, just just to pull the data and dump it out. And uh, I apologize for the horrible map because uh, Google has decided they don't like to. Uh, have people uh, run their map software without uh, giving them a credit card and uh, decide not to do that. So uh, the, uh, the map there says for development purposes only. You can just ignore that. On the right hand side here uh, of the screen is actually a list of all the aircraft that my uh, ADSB receiver I have run, running here and I'll, I'll show you the, a little bit of that. So I'm going to show you the setup now and uh, I'll come back here. So I'm sitting outside my shed here in the backyard where I have a lot of radio equipment. And uh, the uh, first piece of your ADSB receiver is an antenna. I actually have an antenna up there. You can see the, the black thing going up and down there. Um, it's actually a, a homebrew antenna made out of uh, a piece of wire, um, actually uh, electrical wire, just with a couple of twists in the right places for the, uh, for the, for the uh, 1090 megahertz uh, frequency that ADSB runs on. And there's a cable there that goes into the shed, and uh, I'll show you a little bit more of that. So here's the other end of that cable. It goes up from the top of my shed, past all my radio, temporarily in front of everything. Um, and it goes to this, which is um, the board I'm using for uh, ADSB reception. Uh, this is actually a, a repurposed Outernet Dreamcatcher board. Um, I, If you haven't seen my earlier video, uh, Dreamcatcher was a board that... Uh, a group had built for receiving satellite signals and then they stopped sending data on that satellite so they're kind of useless however it turns out that those uh, boards have two things one is a processor there with an undersized heat sink on it um, which is uh, an uh, Armbian uh, processor and it's got uh, also has a uh, a chip for doing the uh, RTL SDR um, now if you were to do this more conventionally uh, you would uh, perhaps do something like this, and this is a different setup. Uh, this is actually a Raspberry Pi. Um, if we can get it focused. That's a Raspberry Pi, and this is one of these. So this is a digital video card, an RTL uh, two uh, two eight three two U card, and those are uh, very very uh, uh, affordable cards that were originally developed for digital television overseas, and some enterprising. Uh, uh, developer figured out you could actually use them to sample uh, RF and <laughs> so they're used more I think for people building uh, uh, radio receivers and for ADSB and for other purposes than they are for digital television um, especially since they're, they they can't actually receive digital television in the US so that's that's a card uh, there's an an, there's an antenna on that one I'm flying oops over here there's the antenna for for the uh, the uh, card. However, I'm using again. I'm using the uh, the Dreamcatcher board. I ha uh, I'm repurposing, which uh, because it was useless, it's actually headed for the 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 trash bin. I uh, put it in a box, and I'm using it for the uh, ASB. So uh, what what else is here? Well, first of all, there's the connector. 
that's the connector to that dream catcher that's from that antenna up on my shed. Uh, and then there is, uh, there's a little board here that is a, uh, a step-down transformer that goes from 12 volts DC to uh, 5 volts, which is what this needs. Uh, this normally is powered off of uh, USB, 5 volt USB. I've directly wired it, um, partially because one of the USB ports that I was using to power this off of uh, broke off. Um, they uh, didn't do a real good job using these USB connectors for power. Uh, they're not real great. Um, this fancy schmancy mess of metal it was my attempt to uh, minimize the noise off that converter. That voltage converter spits out noise like nothing else. I uh, haven't quite got that working yet, but uh, anyway, uh, just uh, just an FYI, that's what that is with the toroid there. And uh, that uh, wire all goes over here to um, a couple of power pull connectors. I've actually got a battery system underneath this desk, powered by a solar panel. So anyway, going from 12 volts to the 5 volts in the box. So this is on my wireless network and it's running software called Dump 1090. And I mentioned that, and that's running on the, uh, the laptop right here, which I will uh, bring up a little bit. Um, so you can do this uh, probably best done with a Raspberry Pi and a card. That's what a lot of people do, especially for uh, uh, deploying someplace. Or, you know, you can actually use a PC. So you could use your laptop. You could use the PC you never use around the corner. As long as you have a run of cable of antenna where you can actually see what's going on. Now I'm not going to go through the actual configuration of the Dump 1090 software, but there's a bunch of online uh, YouTube videos and and walkthroughs and tutorials. But I did want to talk a little bit about um, how to best make use of ADSB. Now this is the uh, view from outside on my shed, on a slight hill outside of Los Angeles, and you can see my coverage is a very narrow, uh, narrow uh, piece of uh, Los Angeles. Well, actually, mostly Ventura County airspace. Uh, that's because uh, 1090 megahertz, that's almost line of sight. And so if you have a site where you can get to, uh, for example, a repeater site, uh, that's a lot better place to put up an ADSB, uh, ADSB receiver. Uh, I actually have another one of these running uh, on top of Sulphur Mountain in Ojai. And uh, that sees all the way to Mexico uh, and all the way north um, uh, past Santa Barbara to uh, Lompoc and, and beyond Central Coast. Um, and it also sees uh, da uh, a little bit to the uh, east, almost to uh, Las Vegas. So the higher you can get these things, the better. Um, uh, we actually pipe all that data to multiple sites, including Flight Radar 24, ADB, uh, uh, ADB Exchange, and also uh, uh, Flight, uh, Flight Aware. So, uh, you know, a lot of the data that you see there, um, some of it comes from us and, of course, other people who also run radio receivers. Uh, the big problem that you, you face with all those is that you need to have somebody with a receiver somewhere close by. Otherwise, you don't get good data. And uh, one thing we found out, um, as folks who know, I've been tr I track a lot of uh, fire and emergency information, is that uh, there's uh, a lot of areas of California, even, that don't have a receiver. So if you want to do some good to help out the community, put one of these up, put it on the internet, and you can actually figure out uh, what's going on in your neighborhood in terms of uh, uh, fires and uh, people fighting fires and that sort of thing. So that's what the part, one of my things I use. It's also fun just to watch uh, what's going in and out of the airports. So um, a little, uh, little information there. So if you look at, let me move this. Anyway, so if you, now I've fixed the screen there. Now if you look at, What's going on? There's actually an identifier uh, for all the ADBS, uh, ADSB receivers. I can't say that right there. Um, there's the flight number. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the squawk is. I'm sure in, uh, some kind of airplane person will tell me I should know that. Altitude is uh, obviously where it is. Speed, track, um, how many messages have been re received, and, and so on. Um, there's a lot more data that can come if you look at... Uh, the online sites, and if you connect it to something like Virtual Radar, that's another software application, you can pull up the picture of the plane, you can see where it was, where it landed, what flight it is, uh, uh, and all that sort of thing. Uh, the other interesting thing you get is there's a lot of uh, airplanes that you can actually receive 
which uh, don't show up on normal uh, normal uh, flight tracking. So, for example, right now you can see a bunch of things that are obviously commercial. So there's a Southwest Flight 1058 there. There is, uh, um, uh, I think that's a Delta Airlines flight there. And then all these end numbers, obviously, are private planes. But um, every once in a while, uh, it's it's interesting because uh, the U.S. military does transmit their ADSB information uh, when they're domestic uh, for air, air, air traffic reasons, and it's kind of fascinating to watch those. Um, and uh, you know, I don't know if they're transmitting what what they want you to see or what it's actually there. But uh, around here, you can actually watch uh, planes flying out of the local military base and out to training exercises and back. So it's always fun. Okay, so what I have now is I have actually um, uh, a server running Virtual Radar, which is another ADSB software package that takes the output of that dump, dump 1090 uh, product and puts it out in a much better interface. Now this is actually showing the range of uh, three three servers, um, one uh, three three of the ADSB cards, my own here in the shed, which has almost no range, the one on Sulphur Mountain and one on Santa Inez. So there's actually three of these. Um, and uh, just thought it'd be good for you to see kind of what the range is for the for uh, seeing what's on there. Um, so if we zoom in, it takes a while here because um, there's so many ar aircraft. Um, you can actually see on this particular software that you can see the path of each uh, airplane that is being tracked, which is kind of neat. So that's uh, that's what virtual radar does, and. Uh, you also notice that it doesn't have that annoying Google message because uh, I just switched the server to show uh, to use uh, OpenStreetMap and uh, Leaflet. So uh, anyway, that's just a little bit of uh, uh, of the traffic there. Now you can see this software also pulls up uh, all the information on the uh, the flight. You can click on any one and see what uh, what kind of airplane is it and what uh, identifier and a picture of it, altitude and all that and. Uh, it's uh, actually quite useful. So um, that is uh, just a little bit more of this. I'll zoom in and uh, see if we can see. Uh, sometimes you can see all the airplanes on the ground in LAX too. So I'll show you that in a second if we can get there. Well, it looks like at uh, this time of day we can't see everything on uh, the ground at LAX. Just a few things. Uh, sometimes you can see everything because uh, the inversion layer uh, uh, between LA and our receivers in Ventura County uh, reflect enough of the signal that we can actually pick up uh, what's on the ground. But uh, can't see that uh, right now, um, but it's kind of fun. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you do get to see, uh, you can see from, from our receivers, we can actually see everything going in and out of LAX, um, but not stuff on the ground at this time of day. Probably in the evening we'll be able to see everything. So anyway, that's more than you probably ever wanted to know about ADSB. but I thought I'd put a little video together just for anyone who's interested in that and interested in putting together your own receiver. Uh, it's uh, again a lot of fun and it's something that uh, a lot of amateur radio operators do and even just a lot of flight enthusiasts and, and whatnot. And so uh, uh, hopefully you learned a little bit from this video and uh, I'll talk to you later. This is AI6YR.